Welcome to our new mobile home. That's right, we bought a mobile home in Florida and we're gonna take you guys on a tour. Now we have so much we wanna tell you, but we know you wanna see the house first. So let's do the tour. We'll sit down at the end and answer all your questions. Now, if you saw our last video, that was a sneak peek teaser. And we showed you guys some of the nastiest features of this house. We kind of wanted to shock you, but we didn't mean to confuse you. So I apologize for all the confusion. The house isn't as bad as it looks, I hope, but here it is. So we're coming in, we'll call it the back door. The back door enters the kitchen. So here is our eat-in kitchen. This is a dining space. Now I know you guys are thinking that we are crazy to buy this house. But like I said, wait till the end, we'll explain everything the best that we can. Here we have an island with a built-in cooktop, electric cooktop. We have a little storage, office, hutch area, built-in oven, built-in wash, dishwasher. We have a sink running into a peninsula countertop. Now here is a view of the kitchen from the living room. You can see it from a different angle. It's just a basic, it's actually a pretty roomy kitchen. It has a lot of storage. It's not bad. It obviously is in rough shape and it's dirty. You can see that there's definitely room for potential. Now the ceilings are just a typical mobile home ceiling. It's like a fiber, uh, I would say a mineral board ceiling. It's got some water damage, it's sagging. It probably looks okay, but it's, it's pretty rough. And you can see that this section of the house has a cathedral ceiling, which is pretty nice. It opens it up, makes it feel roomy. This is a single wide mobile home. And I'm gonna get out of your way so you can see the view from the kitchen. There's not too much to share in here. It is what it is. The oven is certainly 1980s. Dishwasher. Oh, and we don't need to go through everything, but you get, you get it. This is typical of what you'd see under an old kitchen. It's not that bad, honestly. It's filthy, but it's doable. Now, another cool feature of this kitchen is the eat-in dining area, which isn't large, but it has a large window. And I don't know if this works, but... No. But we do have a really nice big bay window. It needs some work. A lot of potential there for falling into the floor. Now this is a problem we see very often with mobile homes especially, and especially when you put a deck too close to your house. The water splashes and gets in, and look at the floor. The floor is definitely rotted, very soft right here. So from the kitchen, let's take a look at the living room. And I'll try to get some light in here for you guys. We got a front door over here. Now I hope you guys can be patient with us through this tour. I'm trying to really give you a good feel of the house. The kitchen and living room and dining area, it's all open concept. We have a nice open living space. Now this is not a big home, but I think they did an okay job with the use of the space. You got some mirrors on the wall, just so you know what those are. We got a small window on either side. There's not a lot of light in the living room. It could be cozy. It's roomy enough. You can see there's a lot of room in here. Yeah, we would definitely take down these curtains for you guys, but they are pretty filthy and I don't even want to touch them, so yeah. The carpet is the worst part. It really makes this room look disgusting because it's so soiled. Here. And especially over here where you can see there used to be a, a, another mat on the floor or a little area rug and you can see the, how dirty it is. It looks to me like it's just a lot of years of filth that's built up and primarily because I think the owner had dogs. If you're wondering if it smells in here, it smells really strong, but mostly I would say like pet odors and not urine or, or feces or anything, but just dog, dog smell. Yeah. It's a heavy, heavy scent of dog and maybe mildew, like musty, musty dog. It smells, but it's, I don't smell smoke and I don't smell urine. It doesn't smell like anything like that. Just, uh, I think it's just a lot of dog filth and dog hair on the floor. So when you're in here, this is the end of the living room. Looking back, you can see the kitchen and 
there's not too much to show in here. There's nothing going on. The walls look okay. No major rot. A little bit of rot by the front door, which we can expect, like the back door. And now from the living room, we enter the hallway. Typical mobile home hallway. This one feels exceptionally narrow. I would say under three feet wide, which is pretty tight. Let's go down the hall. Something I noticed right away when we were touring this home was this floor. You notice it is plywood. It is not a typical particle board floor. The kind of floors that fall apart in mobile homes, it's made out of sawdust, you know? Those are, those are junk, but this floor is solid plywood. I asked about it. I asked if they replaced the floors and the original owners, they, I don't think they did. They had no recollection. All they said is that, yeah, the house has plywood floors. And I've noticed that in the heater vents as well. I think this home was actually built originally with plywood which means that most of the floors in the house should be pretty solid and stable, which means we have a good foundation to start with. That's, that's a good sign when you see real plywood. So we're coming down the hallway. The first room you reach is the kids' bedroom. It's not a large bedroom, but it's cute. It kind of looks like the room we just made for our daughter. It's got a light pink color. And this room, again, fiber, ceilings, kind of saggy and lumpy, has some water spots. And other than that, it's got a dirty rug, and then the room doesn't look too bad. You can see down here, carpeted floors. So here's the hall, the main door going in and out. It looks like a 24 inch door, it's pretty narrow. And next to the door, you can see they have a closet. Ooh, there's a dead mouse in there. So there's the closet, and this room is tiny. It must be, I would say, under eight feet to the closet from where yeah. you guys are. So the whole, even if you go to here, it's probably only nine feet tops. And this way, I would say eight, nine, nine by nine, the closet takes up space. So you're looking at less than eight, less than nine by nine feet. We got this bump out too. So you come in and you get this little hallway. You got two bump outs, the closet and this, which I'll show you in a moment. Well, this section of the floor right here, there's a lot of mold in here and filth, and I don't even wanna put my foot on it to see if it's soft. There's a lot of water damage right here, and that water damage is coming from the bathroom. Let's go take a look at the bathroom. So as we leave that room, back into the hallway, this is that other bump out that I was showing you guys from that little bedroom, and it's just a closet. I'm just opening up the back door here. So this house has three doors. That's pretty good for a small mobile home. Usually there's a front door and a back door, but this one has an extra extra door, so. And I'll show you guys. So it's just a little closet. They left us a vacuum. And what my guess is, and I could be wrong, this could have just been a storage closet, but my guess is that at one point, this was probably the furnace closet. Pretty hard to tell, but this house doesn't have a furnace. There's no heating system. There are heating ducts, like there's uh, vents in the floor. So we know that it used to have a central heating system. There aren't any currently. There's no heat in the house. Probably used to be that furnace closet. And you can see we're stepping into the laundry area here in the hallway. This is gonna be hard to show you guys, but we have the washer and dryer next to each other, but the bathroom door in the middle. This helps open up that hallway so it doesn't feel so closed in at least. So it's kind of, it's okay. And it's right by the back door in case you wanna hang your laundry outside. It's not, it's not a bad laundry area. That dryer is spewing an awful lot of lint down here. You probably won't be able to see it very good, so definitely a hazard. Okay, let's get into here. The room everybody wants to see, the bathroom. It's a small bathroom, typical small bathroom. Nothing special about it. I'll do my best to show you guys what it looks like, but we have a pretty good sized sink and countertop right here, vanity, toilet, and a large, large size shower bathtub. The bathtub has paneled walls and those paneled walls have decayed. And that's where the water is getting into that bedroom floor. Whoever was taking a bath or a shower in here, the water runs down the wall, goes behind the tub and is ruining the floor in the bedroom. So now you can see what I mean. The whole bottom of this wall board that they used for the shower surround has decayed to the point where the water 
can easily slip back there. We're definitely going to have some rot in the floor and in the framing in this room. And now that I have the light on, you can see a little better. Little window there, I like that. We have the vanity, the light. There we are. Now, the reason we're kind of keeping the power off and trying to use the power minimally in this home right now is because we just want to be safe. We don't know if there's anything wrong with the electrical. We know that some of the lights weren't functional and we just don't know much about the home. We haven't been through it yet. So we're keeping it off out of safety just so that there's no chance of anything shorting out or any problems anywhere in the house. So that's why we're kind of taking you on a dark tour. The house does have power. We're just being extra cautious with it uh, because there was some problems with some of the outlets, some of the lights not working. And actually that's a problem that we've seen in other mobile homes. And it's usually because of a bad connection in the wall somewhere. Last room of the house is the master bedroom. Yeah, the, the house is actually a two bedroom. So it's just master and one little bedroom. Okay, from the hallway, looking into the master bedroom. Now this room, we don't want to stay in too long. This is probably the smelliest one because, because of mold. You can smell it. This isn't even the dog odor. This is just filth and mold. So let's just get this over with quick. You can see this bedroom, even though large, it's the width of the home, it only has one window. That's going to change. You can see they left some furniture behind. Nothing special, just an old dresser. It is old too. I don't know if we can salvage anything out of that. It's filthy. We have a cathedral ceiling. I don't know if you noticed in the bathroom and the small bedroom, the, the ceiling got low. But it jumps back up here, gives us some extra space. So over here you can see it has a good sized closet. It kind of jets out into the room awkwardly. This is the worst of the problems right here, I would say. This wall has severe rot underneath the window. Now, obviously the window is leaking, the seal is bad, or just having this AC unit in here could have done that. The AC unit is probably allowing water to get in where it shouldn't and just rotted this wall right out. And it looks so bad that I'm sure it's gotten into the floor and probably rotted the floor under the window. This is going to be a hassle to fix, but we can fix it. Um, but that's where the moldy smell is coming from, all under this window. I guess we can also point out here, a little bit of rot. So we definitely had a roof leak there that breached the ceiling board. But, I mean, overall, I think the ceilings are a lot better than you'd expect. And that is the tour of the master bedroom. Nothing else to show in here. So I'm just glad that we can finally get outside and get some fresh air. It's definitely not pre pleasant breathing in the air in that house. Here's the back door leading into the backyard. And you can see the house has the typical mobile home metal siding. It just, it's filthy. It's been under these trees too long. And as you can see, the trees are entirely too close to the house. Now coming outside here, you can see there's a little deck off the back of the house and it kind of encircles the septic tank. It's the septic. And I just thought it'd be fun to point this out to you guys because a lot of people don't see exposed septic tanks and at our, at our property, at our home, they were surprised that ours were so close to the surface and they said they've never seen that before. So, well here it is again, the second time you're going to see it an exposed septic in the backyard because on some properties it just works better to have it high up. It gives you better drainage and it doesn't really need to be covered. So here it is. Where we're located, the septic tanks don't need to be covered. This is part of why we bought this property. We really loved the area. I don't know if you can hear the neighbors. There's people weed whacking. There's noises going on. It is in a little community. It's, it does have neighbors close by, but it has a nice sized lot. And it's very pretty. I don't know if you can make out the mound right here, but we're on a mound. That's where the leach field is for the septic. Let's go take a look at the yard. Over here, we can get signs of the dog. We know there was a dog here. You could smell it. And this needs to be cleaned up. This was built on the septic mound. Not ideal. You never want to put your pets on the mound. It's just not a good idea. We got some really cool tropical plants in here. Some places that need to be cleaned up.
you can see it does come back to a fence line. And here is the view from the backyard. The camera is going to make this look a little bit bigger than it is. It's going to exaggerate it because of the lens distortion. So we're not trying to make it look bigger than it is. Imagine it just being a normal size yard. It's kind of smaller, but you can see the house right there and everybody's standing in front of it. And you can see there's the mound. The, that's where the septic is. We got all kinds of cool plants in here, some pine trees, various bushes. Definitely got some clearing out to do to make this even more useful. Now, since we're still pretty new to Florida, plants like this still get us excited. It's so cool to see the tropical plants down here and we're definitely gonna be saving those. Look how big this is. Huge. Off the back of the mobile home, somebody built a shed. Now this thing is in rough shape. It is collapsing. All I can say is you should never build anything off the back of your house, your mobile home. Don't, don't attach anything to it if you can. You can see the floor is rough. We have not even walked in here. Look at this. I don't want to walk in here. There's a little bit of stuff left behind. And the whole structure is just kind of falling apart and you can see how the roof actually it fell away. Look at this. The corner separated. The whole back wall is falling away from the roof. The trusses are breaking. It's rough. And that structure, this is the shed, is actually built onto this deck, which is also in rough shape. And you can see it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's wonky, it's not level, it's sagging. From this way, you can definitely see that needs fixing. All kinds of little stuff. Little treasures to look through. There's nothing else to show you on the back deck. Let's go to the front deck. Here we are. We have a front covered deck and it's a good size. Forgive the screaming, we got kids playing out here. Now this, this is a lot nicer than the back deck. It's solid, but it's not framed right. The whole thing is framed all wrong and needs help. First of all, this roof is hobbled and cobbled together. I don't even know what they were trying for because we got some going this way, then we got some going this way, multiple. It, it's just all hooked together. There's no support under this. I don't know what they were doing. And worst of all, it's hooked to the house. Don't hook to a mobile home. It's just a bad idea. This is just screwed to the side of the house and it should be self-supported. I would really love to see this having its own post coming down to the ground and not being supported by this house because all it's gonna do is put strain on that outside wall. And right here on the front of the house, we have a little access door you can see in the side of the siding and that is where the water heater, it has an electric water heater located inside that. Little cubby, in case you're wondering where that was. And with that, I think it just about wraps up our tour. It's the weekend, the kids are playing, it's noisy. But this is the real, this is it. And actually that's great because it gives you a real feel of the property, of the community, of what we bought here. Now we will be renovating this entire mobile home and we'll be taking you guys along for the project. So here is Ashley. She's been around behind the camera during this tour. What do you think? What do you think of this? Are we crazy? Yeah. <laughs> well, we had to do it. We're going to go home and we're going to finish talking about this purchase, why we did it, everything else. But here in the moment, it looks doable, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm looking forward to clearing some stuff out. I like doing the outside yard stuff. That's like my thing. Mm -hmm. This was probably the grossest property we've ever bought. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think that's just going to make it all the more enjoyable for you guys. Yeah. So let's go home where it's quieter. We'll sit down and we'll talk about it. So we bought a mobile home and no, we're not moving. We love our home, we love our property and we have so much to do and finish right here still. But we bought this house as an investment property. This is the first time we've ever done anything like this. A bunch of people have said over the years in our comments that we should flip a property, that we should do this for a living. You know, because mm -hmm. we've always renovated homes and we've 
we're pretty good at it. This is what we do. This is what we've gained our skills in the most is fixing homes. And you guys have seen our work. No, we never thought that was a real possibility because buying a property is expensive, fixing it is expensive, and we never really had an opportunity to do that other than buying a house to live in and fixing it while we live in it. We never really considered it until an opportunity arose. Local to us, we had a chance to get a property that was close by that needed help, and it was a good price, and it was exactly what we we're looking for something fun that we can do something we can share with you guys on the channel and we can you know it doesn't have to be as personal to us and it'll be a totally different experience that we've never had before because we won't be living there yeah we've never fixed a house that we weren't living in and i feel like that's gonna make it easier because now we'll be able to you know like gut the bathroom and we're not living in the home while we do that yeah it's always been a, a struggle. It's hard. Now it might seem like a big project to take on right now when we're not done with our house, but this is how we make our living now. And we needed a way to continue our income. And we know that, you know, our savings account is was getting smaller and smaller as we fix this house. Income is never guaranteed. So we said, let's let's take all of our money and do this. We weren't really looking for an investment property, but we like to look around and keep our eye out. And when we saw it, it was such a good deal. Not just the price, but it was just the locality. Everything was good. So all together, we just saw this as what a great opportunity and we didn't want to miss it. So we put everything into it. We went all in and we, and we got it. So we have it, it's ours. And I know you're probably wondering how much it cost. I'm going to keep that private for now just for our sake, I don't know if that's relevant because you could buy the same house in New York and it will cost twice as much and you can buy the same house in California and it will cost 10 times yeah. as much. Yeah, or you can buy the same house in Michigan and it would cost half Less. as much. Yeah. So it depends on location and uh, for here, it was a good deal. We got it for about the price of the land, I would say. The, the home was in such bad shape that they were selling it for the land value. Mm -hmm. But we said, no, 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 no. We can, <laughs> yeah. we can save that. And I think it's fun because we get to show you guys a full mobile home renovation. And I think those are always a little more interesting, in my opinion. So that's the plan, is to do a full renovation inside and out and just transform this place. Share it with you guys. I'm gonna to try to be as detailed as I can and more orderly. On this house, we're all over the place. We could be working on a bedroom, then we're outside building a porch. You never know what's gonna happen, and I know it's chaotic. That's just how it is to live in a renovation. With this house, we can go a little more organized, and we can go step by step in order. It'll make more sense, and you guys can come along and see the process. I think that's gonna be really cool. Now, I do want to say that as we take you along on this renovation project, we want to be respectful for the people who lived there. Now, some people speculated that somebody had died, and that's why we got the property. Um, they did not die. There was no death in the house. It was just a situation where somebody was renting that property, and they weren't able to maintain it. And some people, through they, they may not be physically able or mentally able, whatever the case is, they ha they need help and they don't have the help available to them. So they weren't able to upkeep the home and it just get, it got in a bad state. And that's all it is. And we're not trying to put them down and we're not trying to show their downfalls because everybody has their, everybody has their own problems. You know, it's just an unfortunate situation. But what we're trying to showcase is not how nasty it is, but how you can you can bring something back from that state and make it awesome again. Mm -hmm. So no disrespect to them, we understand. People go through all kinds of trouble and not everybody has somebody there to, you know, help them. So we are gonna start this project pretty soon. I'm hoping to get started this month. And I'll tell you the first projects are gonna be outside because I wanna start fixing some of the decks. I know it seems crazy to worry about the decks when the house is so bad inside. The deck isn't stable and I don't trust it and I don't want to be coming in and out, in and out and have something collapse. I don't want the steps to 
break and somebody gets hurt or the deck to collapse and somebody gets hurt. It's, it's just an accident waiting to happen. So I'm just going to give you guys the heads up for thinking about starting on at least the back deck, rebuilding it, getting it solid, putting some steps on there so we can get in and out safely and then start gutting the house. It's going to be a total gut. We're going to get rid of everything and, and do it all from the beginning properly. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's too much else to say about it. We just invested in the second property and we're looking forward to seeing the transformation. I know that it looked bad, especially in that teaser video that we sent mm -hmm. out, but I really think that it's something that we can work with and I think it's going to be a pretty cool project to work on. And you guys will be surprised, I think, at what we can do, hopefully, if we can pull it together. Mm. So I think that's all there is to it. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments, and we will try to answer them in future videos the best that we can. It's always hard to know what you guys are going to ask. Let us know, and we'll try to answer them. But yeah, throw out your comments, throw out your suggestions. I look forward to reading them. And uh, it's going to help us, because this project is going to be... A little bit different than our usual ones and I think it's gonna be fun to you know take you guys along so thanks for watching and until next time take care see ya